Gotta love all that chemtrail activity in the skies today. Hotter than hell up in the Rocky Mountains. Kind of unusual for this time of year, actually. So contrary to what may or may not be popular opinion out there, I'm actually a I'm actually a fairly reasonable guy. This is my watch, Nate, by the way, in case you're unfamiliar. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm a fairly reasonable guy. I try to lean on the side of rationality, I guess. You know, I'm a rationalist. Even though I do believe in certain things, like the Word of God was inspired by men who were inspired by God's Holy Spirit. Because there's nothing on this earth that makes more sense of the world, I've come to find anyway. In the Bible. And I know that sounds like caveman talk to some of you guys out there. I know I sound like a primitive savage, whatever you want to call me. That's okay. Um, but you can't argue the fact that the Bible is the most influential, I mean, it's by far the most printed book on the planet. And without any argumentation there shouldn't be anyway uh, the Bible is the most influential book on human civilization that has ever existed so why does it have such a successful track record you could say um, why is Jesus Christ still to this day the most influential figure in the history of mankind so you have to confront that fact if you are an atheist or, you know, if for whatever reason you just have a chip on your shoulder against Christianity, which so many people do. You know, they're all okay with all these other religions out there. But um, when it comes to Christianity, they seem to really, really, really not be able to stand it. And I, I wonder why, right? I wonder what makes Christianity so different from Buddhism or Confucianism or um, Islam or... Taoism, any, any other myriad of belief systems out there. Probably because Christianity is still a big factor, a big motivator, um, intertwined with our social fabric to this day. The teachings of Christ, the life of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And that's why, unfortunately, you have politicians like Donald Trump recently in my mind it's kind of a it's a it's a sickening display to have a candidate running for POTUS for the president of the United States selling Bibles on the side for profit $60 a pop by the way um, while he's preaching about on his little political podium vote for me and like he says, in November 5th. We're going to win the White House and we are going to save our country. We're going to save our country. November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day. When Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. We're going to make it a new holiday, right? We're going to make it a new national holiday. It's going to be called Christian Visibility Day. Why is that? Because... Every Christian, of course, is expected to vote for none other than Donald Trump. <clears throat> and, I, and I know a lot of people on the right don't seem to see anything wrong with that, right? I mean, that's obviously, and, and as a Christian, I admit this myself, you know, and I've used the same argument myself, is that, you know, from, from some of the writings of, of great thinkers in early American history, um, like John Adams, and how our constitutional republic was designed for none other than a moral and religious people. And without a moral and religious people, it will quickly fall apart. And that is what we're looking at today in this country. You want to know, you want to get to the root of the problem with our culture, with our society, with how our government is being run by criminals who could care less about the rule of law. Look none other than within your own hearts, because 
we kind of get, it's a biblical principle, by the way, we kind of get the leadership that we deserve, that we put up with, that we tolerate, right? Um, if, you, if you're a, if you're a immoral people, right? If you, if you already have got lax standards when it comes to your own individual conduct, whether that's in private, right? Or whether that's in public, um, you're that much more likely to tolerate tyranny. It just makes sense, right? It's logical, it's rational. And, uh, <clears throat> so does it make me a little sick as a Christian to see the exploitation of fellow people of the book, people that choose to follow Christ, um, by these chameleons, you know, like, I love this compilation that I saw on uh, X, somebody put together, of all the times that Trump was asked about uh, the Bible, you know, it's his favorite book, of course, right? It's Trump's favorite book, the Bible. Um, and yet, despite that claim, uh, he couldn't name one verse from the Bible that was inspirational to him, really? One verse. you've been talking about how it's your favorite book and you said i think last night in iowa some people are surprised that you say that i'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal you know when i talk about the bible it's very personal so i don't want to get into there's verses no, there's i don't no want to get into it there's no, no verse that means I, I a lot to you that you think about or cite the, the bible means a lot to me but i don't want to get into specifics even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible. I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the Art of the Deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. It's the best uh, book you've look. read beside Art of the Deal. Um, I, I really like Tom Wolfe's last book, and uh, I think I think he's a great author. He's uh, he's done a beautiful job. He's which book? He's uh, the, his current book. His his just his current book. It's just out. Bonfire of the Vanities. Yes, um. and and uh, the uh, the man has done a, a very very good job. And I don't I, I really can't hear with his earphone, by the way. And I asked some of the folks because I hear this is a major theme right here. But two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians. 317, that's the whole ball game. Where the Spirit of the Lord, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And here there is Liberty College, but Liberty University. But it is so true. You know, when you think, and that's really, is that the one? Is that the one you like? I think that's the one. And this is your, this is your man of God. This is your David, right? That's some people liken him to. I mean, the messianic talk around the uh, president right now, the, around the uh, presidential elections, to me, in my mind, is just all kinds of alarm bells are going off because I know a little bit, again, as somebody who believes in the word of God, is inspired, and believes that God is the Alpha and the Omega, he has seen the end from the beginning, he transcends time and space, and prophecy time and time again has been fulfilled throughout the Old Testament when it's pointing towards the coming Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Let me put on a seatbelt. And so, give me a second. Damn it. Um, and so, um, I realize uh, from Bible prophecy, from the book of Revelation, um, that it will eventually come down to a majority, a democracy, demanding the death of everyone who doesn't receive the mark of the beast. And and it does revolve around worship, right? Revelation 13, 15, um, you'll force all those who did not receive the mark, who did not worship the image of the beast, worship being the key word in that uh, verse, they might be put to death, that, them, that they might be killed. And and so when you see, there's a reason why the, the early Protestants formed this nation, felt it necessary, right? And, and you can make the argument that not all the, uh, not all the, uh, obviously, not all the founding fathers were Protestant Christians, but they also had to listen to their constituency like never before in our nation's history because they didn't have 
all the protections of the federal government and the standing military, you know, the, the Secret Service and all these other layers of protection that they enjoy today, including now that Trump wants to uh, give even more immunity to the presidency by making it illegal for anybody to ever prosecute them, even after they're out of office for the crimes that they've committed. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Unless you're talking about anybody other than Donald Trump, right guys? You ever think that far ahead sometimes, I wonder. I mean, NPCs, on the right and the left, guys. I mean, be honest with yourselves. Um, if it's our guy, it's A-OK. -okay. They can get away with, like Trump bragged about, murder in the street. And still walk away scot-free because he's Donald Trump. He's the Teflon Don. But yet he's a holy man of God, right? That still can't quote one verse out of the Bible. His favorite book. And he's selling for a profit, of course. Um... <clears throat> Just to continue on here, um, there's a reason why the early Protestant Americans, founding fathers, inspired by hundreds of years of persecution from the Roman Catholic Church in old Europe, and the and the recent uh, developments in France with the French Revolution, and all of this blowback that resulted from all that hundreds of years of oppression from the church being involved in the affairs of the state, church, and politics, right? The woman, the harlot, the unfaithful church, riding on the beast, which is you know, commonly known from uh, Bible prophecy. If you read the book of Daniel and the vision of Nebuchadnezzar, the different beasts are governments, right? In the history of the Western world, which is where the uh, religion of Christianity sprang forth, right? <clears throat> so it's the only relevant um, kingdoms uh, pertaining to the um, passage of time when it comes into the context of the spreading of the gospel and the anointed one, the Messiah, the savior of the world, which came to die for everybody from every tongue, every nation, every nationality. Um, but see, there's a reason why let me get to my final point or my final point on this point that's been dragging on for so long <clears throat> just trying to gather my thoughts here um, the reason why the first amendment is the first amendment right the separation of church and state which so many on the right even uh, you know meat puppets in uh, political high offices including uh, the speaker the uh, speaker that everybody loves to hate apparently now it didn't last long that little honeymoon period did it this new ownership this new boss to be uh, proven to be the same as the old boss Mike Johnson uh, according to him and a few others like uh, Lauren Bulbert unfortunately uh, separation of church and state is not within our founding documents guys okay <clears throat> why is there such a push to get church back into state, you think you might be just be getting played by the dialectic yet again, guys. When you have President Biden, who's a devout Catholic, by the way, celebrates, he goes to mass, uh, keeps a picture of the Jesuit Pope on his desk at the Oval Office. He's so proud of his Catholicism. The Pope himself, who is the head of the church, if you understand Catholic doctrine, the head of the church, the Pope, you know, what the Pope says goes, basically. And so if you're a Catholic and you don't believe in the current Pope, you might want to reconsider your faith, I'm just saying. Because the Pope is ultimately, according to church teachings, church doctrine, the Pope is ultimately the head of the church, and you cannot go against what the Pope decrees. And the Pope himself said that Biden is a good Catholic, guys. So don't question Biden's Catholicism. Question Catholicism. <clears throat> And, and Catholicism has been notorious uh, throughout its history. Thousands and thousands of years of making compromises uh, for political gain, for earthly, worldly power. That's what makes the harlot a harlot. Because she made all the kings of the earth, it talks about in Revelation, drunk with the 
wine of the wrath for fortification, right? Um, she's in bed. She's sleeping with all the political powers around the world. And you have to ask yourself, why do so many uh, political leaders, presidents, uh, premiers, whatever, um, as well as CEOs, always sneak off, disappear, go to visit the Pope in private, you know, for a private audience. Um, even recently, the Soros, the Soros Foundation, and yes, even Elon Musk disappeared for several weeks. Everybody was wondering what happened to Elon Musk, and all of a sudden he pops up, and oh, he's hanging out with the Pope. Yeah, you gotta check in with the Pope, don't you? You kind of wonder why a head of a religious organization like the Pope would be such an important figure. Well, Catholicism, for one thing, is the largest Christian denomination in the world. And for another thing, the Vatican, uh, the Holy See in particular, uh, has been alive as an institution since at least 330 AD, according to their own um, claims, even earlier than that. They claim to be the succession of the Roman Empire. But even still, 330 AD, the Roman uh, Holy See has been in existence, guys, working for the same end game of papal supremacy. The oldest globalist institution on the earth with arguably the most blood on its hands, right? Millions and millions, some estimates were 20 million or even as high as 100 to 500 million people martyred over the long, cruel history of this evil institution. Between its inquisitions, between its ruthless persecution, Protestant Christians, the endless holy wars all across Europe that took tens of millions of lives as she fought tooth and nail, scratching and clawing to keep her grip on power. And so when I see Biden uh, provoking the right by putting out this little uh, announcement, this little blurb about uh, Trans Visibility Day on March 31st, with just which just happened to fall on the most coveted, most cherished Christian holiday, apparently, Easter Sunday. Um, I think it's just a little too convenient. The reaction from the right is to get more on fire um, for the idea of defeating the left, defeating the secular left, a nihilistic, godless left. And with what solution? Uh, more religion and politics. Whose agenda do you think that serves? You know, the Pope just sits back. You know, this current president, Biden, Pope approved, good Catholic Biden. Pope just sits back and, he's, and he thinks, you know what? I'm satisfying the left, right? Because I, I'm, the, uh, I'm the Pope who says, who am I to judge, right? The gay friendly, LGBTQ friendly Pope. Well, at the same time, uh, the left, the political left in this country, is continually poking and prodding the right to react accordingly, which is, what's the solution? Once again, more religion or politics. Whose agenda do you think that serves, other than the Pope? The Pope who... Um, that institution, at least, um, from the founding of America, saw America as a heretical idea, that the people should govern themselves, when in that system, the true theocratic monarchy, which is, you know, the Vatican, the smallest country, the smallest city-state in the world, Vatican City, um, yeah, it's a theocratic monarchy, and in its mind, as Revelation describes her, a harlot, she sits a queen and will see no sorrow. She sits the queen of the whole earth. She sits on the throne of Peter, she claims. She claims Peter was the first pope and therefore the successor of Jesus Christ himself. And the pope, the vicar, sits in the place of of the ministering, of the 
ministry, the, the administering of the Holy Spirit, which is what Jesus really said he'd leave us with, is his Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to guide us and to teach us in all things. And to him alone we come to in prayer. Because boldly we can go to the, the throne of God. Boldly the individual believer. That's a Protestant teaching, right? And it wasn't without teachings without, I mean, we would have never had a uh, constitutional republic without Protestant teachings, such as freedom of conscience, right? Um, Soli fide, by, by faith alone, of the individual, right? So when we hear this, uh, these political messiahs like Trump, let's just dog on Trump some more. It's because it's easy now, right? It's all locked up, so it's not even a choice, you know? I'm not threatening anybody's little golden calf so much anymore because the uh, fake little reality show of a political process is already pretty much played out, and it's pretty obvious at this point that Biden is a, a lame duck, right? A dead horse, okay? A meat puppet. <clears throat> I like that. I've been using that lately. First person I heard that uh, referred to our leaders as meat puppets was uh, Michael Yon, I think it was. The, uh, the journalist who's been documenting the invasion down there from South America. UN, uh, Roman Catholic led invasion, by the way. These uh, Catholic charity and other uh, 501c3 groups uh, working along with our taxpayer dollars, of course, and the UN to just completely destroy our national sovereignty, which is what you have if you don't have borders. You don't have any more nation, do you? So it fits right into the New World Order. And this whole plan to destroy America, flood America with Catholic voters, by the way. I know everybody makes a big deal about how they're Biden voters, while they're, you know, the majority of uh, South American countries are primarily Catholic, right? And if you want to see what a Catholic system, what a Catholic-led government looks like, just look at some of those crap holes in South America and ask yourself, well, what's more enlightened of the two, Western civilization, Europe, America, or South America? You know, judge them by their fruits, and uh, it's pretty obvious, you know, freedom is the way to go. Freedom of conscience, Protestant principles, Protestant ideas. Catholicism, no, it doesn't It doesn't leave any room for uh, innovation. It doesn't leave any room for free thought because it's such a stifling, smothering bureaucracy. The uh, Roman Catholic Church I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the individual believers, but I do believe when the Bible says, Babylon has fallen, come out of her, my people, it is talking to those individual believers to come out of that evil system, which the Bible also describes in Revelation as the cage of every unclean bird, every unclean and hateful bird, which bird is also a symbol of spirits, demons. So that system makes it as hard as possible for people to find salvation because there are so many hoops that you got to jump through. There's so many... Uh, um, co-mediatrix or whatever they call these different uh, saints, these dead people that they worship, that they pray to. Mother Mary, Queen of Heaven, right? You gotta go through Mary. Uh, that's not biblical, right? There is only one uh, way to the Father, and that is through the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice. And even Mary was born with sin. There was no immaculate conception. It's another false doctrine, another false teaching. Uh, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Paul says. But in any case, so, so it's a dangerous idea to get religion involved in our politics, right? The Protestant reformers who, you know, made up the large majority of early American colonizers um, were smart enough to realize that, you know, yes, you need a moral and religious people, and sure, it's nice to have some more on religious people in government, but you can't rely on 
political messiahs because they don't exist, right? Um, and yes, the, the people need to be outraged when they see corruption, right? They need to demand justice, right? None of these people in high office ever see any justice. They never see any jail time for the crimes that they commit. <sighs> and that's because people don't give a damn, apparently, right? That's because we're not a moral people. But you can't legislate morality, right? That's what the, uh, the examples of the Pharisees, you know, the, the legal scholars, in Jesus' day, that's why they made you know, simple commandments like the uh, Sabbath commandments not to do your own work, but to uh, worship the God who created all things on the seventh day, by the way. Um, they uh, heaped heavy burdens, like Jesus said, and they didn't uh, lift a finger to do anything themselves, right? These uh, blind guides, as Jesus also referred to them as. They made law upon law, right? Hundreds of laws uh, to try to keep a simple commandment of just resting one day out of the week and appreciating God for who he is. And it's like any relationship-based, uh, it's like anything you build a relationship on, it takes time to build a relationship, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So if we don't in this busy, hectic, time in which we live, it's, um, information age, contemporary modern civilization, if we don't take the time to, you know, open God's word, spend a little time with God, to learn about the things of God, and uh, to learn about the life of Jesus, you know, the highest standard that mankind has ever known, we are quickly going to stray, and we're quickly going to start looking more and more like the world around us, which is a pretty ugly it's in a pretty ugly state lately, isn't it? It doesn't look too pretty. It's not too pretty to look at. In any case, I've rambled on long enough. I'm on my way to the dump again today. I got this huge load. Hopefully I haven't lost anything in the back. In the uh, trailer back there. Uh, thanks again to everybody for, everybody for watching. Hopefully I, I kind of explain myself. You know, I, sometimes I put out these tweets, these blurbs, these posts. And I probably, to most people, in fact, I know this because I often lose followers and subscribers, but you know what? If I'm, if I'm going to be one of these guys that like watches everything I, I say every minute of the day, how is that going to be genuine, right? Why would you want to watch somebody or listen to somebody who's just not genuine? Who's just putting out garbage for clickbait, right? That's why I've recently, I just wanted to touch on this quickly, um, I've recently began to kind of call out a lot of these, you know, like Alex Jones, right? Infowars is probably the biggest uh, alternative media site source. Uh, now he's putting out, you know, live streams on X. Now that it's back on X, um, and you know they just put out videos recently about the, the solar eclipse because everybody's like everything, like no matter what happens in the world today, everybody's got to freak out about the latest conspiracy theory, right? So that's why I kind of started out my show saying, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly reasonable guy, right? And yes, there are conspiracies. And yes, I believe in Bible prophecy. Yes, I believe in um, the Antichrist and the coming Mark of the Beast. And that's why I kind of hate, if you love the truth, you've got to kind of hate the lie, right? So if I see people and, and different bobbleheads out there, different uh, alternative new, new sources just continually putting out I call it like daily doom um, you know your dose of daily doom your fear porn right um, clickbait garbage right they gotta know on some level this is my assessment anyway they gotta know on some level that what they're putting out is bull crap right it's just designed to be sensational to be reactionary and to drive views, to drive clicks, to drive followers, right? Because the more sensational, the more over the top, the more insane um, your information is, your content, your your memes, whatever, uh, the more attention you get, right? It's like that little kid you knew, you might have known a kid like this, I knew a couple um, back in school, uh, I think 
this was even, uh, yeah, like in preschool, before high school, uh, that would just, they have to continue, these compulsive liars, these, that they, they would have to continually lie to puff themselves up, I guess, because they had such a fragile little ego. They were so insecure that they had to constantly be making grandiose claims about themselves um, in order to, in their minds at least, I don't know, stay on top of the competition. I'm not quite sure. I've never been that way in my life, but I've never felt the need to BS my way into approval by others. But um, yeah, some people are just like that. And <clears throat> so when I see clickbait after clickbait, you know, fear porn after fear porn, the daily dose of doom from these same sources. And yes, InfoWars kind of fits the same uh, description, kind of fits the same profile. Stu, right? Stu Peters. Hey, guys, I'm not going to name too many names. Yes, Russell Brand, of course. Idiot. Um, anyway. I can't stand some of you guys. Yeah, if you're profiting off of being a prophet, right? You're a false prophet, for one thing. Um, you know, because there's nothing biblical about selling um, truth in the Bible. Like, true prophets of God did not ask for a donation after they uh, uttered um, some inside intel that they received directly from God. No, they gave it out freely, and it was up to the listener whether or not they wanted to accept that message that was given by God, right? And it's usually a message of rebuke. It's not like the sensationalized lying signs and wonders, you know, like the, the latest thing is the solar eclipse. The video that kind of got me started on this was like put out by uh, Greg Reese and Alex Jones in for wars. And Greg Reese puts out great videos. I've, I've talked to him before in the past. Pretty good stuff. But uh, he starts out his video on the solar eclipse with this idea that there's this devil, it's, it's a horned comet because it has like two little flares coming out of it that look like horns. I think it also comes out of the uh, Draconids or something like that, uh, constellation Draco. So it's also known as like the mother of dragons, the devil comet, the, you know, this evil comet is at the same time of the solar eclipse. In fact, it's kind of cool. It's going to be seen in some parts that they were saying. You might even be able to see it in the sky during the solar eclipse, man, I really missed out on that one this year. It just came in, came so quickly. I never had any time to plan for it. Um, so I'll be seeing, I think it's about like 70% of the eclipse. Still kind of cool, but not as cool as uh, total solar eclipse. Trust me, I saw that one in 2017. And that was a life changing experience right there. Way up in uh, Casper, Wyoming. It's so cool to see this massive shadow. We were up in the mountains a little bit, camped out the night before and this massive shadow just coming at us, you know, across the plains. And then all of a sudden, you know, everything's pitch black, like it's night out. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, his, so there's one of these theories that uh, Greg Reese in this InfoWars video put out there was that this comet is going to align with the solar eclipse and create earthquakes. But many people believe that they could be preparing for possible earthquakes due to the devil comet aligning with the April 8th eclipse and due to the fact that in 1811, a comet also appeared in the skies during a solar eclipse on the same path and was followed by the biggest earthquakes in American history. I'm like, wait a second. So I look it up. The comet's only 10 miles wide and it's millions of miles. I think it's 1.5 times the distance of the sun to the earth. And that's somehow going to create earthquakes, guys. Really? And so in my mind, you just lose all credibility. The more you put out this, the more of these little crying, these little boys crying wolf out there continually on a daily basis. And you just discredit, you know, everything that, you know, I personally believe, right? Like America first, sure. Uh, patriotism, Bible-based Christianity, you know, we are living in Earth's final hour. I believe that. And there are a lot of prophecies vast majority of the prophecies of the Bible have been fulfilled already, and all the time prophecies, as far as I understand, have already been fulfilled. So when you hear these false prophets, and Jesus warned us of this, beware of false prophets, right? Uh, who say the end is near and, and Christ is here, um, because that's one of the, the biggest deceptions in the end times, is these false prophets just spreading 
continual fear porn. And it gets on my nerves, guys. I'm sorry, but yeah, you just describe the whole movement and you make us all into a mockery. This recent article from the Rolling Stone about how uh, the far right has completely lost its GD mind. I'd have to agree with it, actually. I'd have to actually agree with it this time. Anyway, I'm here at the dump. God bless everybody. Um, just, you know, stay in God's word. You won't be led astray. And uh, just be careful, you know, which false prophet you listen to. Because there's, there's, there's a full smorgasbord out there. There's a full all-you-can-eat buffet of false prophets these days on social media. And God willing, you know, I won't be one of them. That's my, my hope. That's my wish. That's my prayer. And... Yeah, I mean, if I'm not gonna lean on sensationalism, if I'm gonna you know, calmly assess the situation instead of just have this knee-jerk reaction every time something happens in the world, yeah, hopefully I won't be spreading lies myself. Anyway, God bless everybody. I appreciate, I hope you appreciate my sincerity, my honesty, and uh, I'm not just here for views, I'm not just here for followers, I'm here because I want to put out what I believe to be true and yes, we are living in the end times. And yes, we need to get right with God. But we need most of all to get right with, get in line with God's word. Because the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments, right? Anyway, God bless everybody that's not watching Nate. I'm here. Um, until next time, signing out.